The Hoenn region introduced in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire is easily one of the most beloved Pokemon regions of all time. However, just like any other Pokemon region, it is susceptible to mysteries that are hidden within its borders that still to this day have not been explained in any way, shape, or form. Over the past several weeks, I have been covering unexplained mysteries from every generation of Pokemon, and in today's video it is time to cover unexplained mysteries that originate from the third generation of Pokemon and the Hoenn region. Before we get started though, I would like to give a big shout out and thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a game I'm sure you've all heard about before, so you guys know that it's a dark fantasy RPG with really good graphics, a good storyline, and all of the magic and sword fighting you could ever want. But straight up, it's also a really good game, especially for mobile. I have played it myself, and I've been genuinely impressed by the quality of the game, and I really like the gameplay too. One newer thing they have added as well that's really cool though is the ability to play on PC, and also the ability to play cross device between PC and mobile, which is honestly ridiculous especially because this game is completely free to play. There's also a bunch of content and gameplay modes like the single player story mode, PvP battles, hundreds of champions to collect and customize, and even the new battle pass events that allow you to get tons of equipment, money, champions, you name it, by completing completing the daily and weekly challenges. So do yourself a favor and help out the channel at the same time by using the link in the description below to download the game, and if you're a new player, you'll also get 100,000 silver and a free epic champion, Hexweaver. I mean, honestly, who wouldn't want to play as her? You can go to your inbox to claim your rewards once you've downloaded the game, and you can also look me up under Hoops and Hip Hop if you'd like as well. So once again, follow those links below to download the game, and thank you again to Raid for sponsoring this video. Okay, so back to the Pokemon, like I mentioned earlier, I am going to be covering 5 unexplained mysteries in this video that originate from the Hoenn region. I am going to be explaining them, I am going to be talking about what makes them so mysterious, and I'm going to, if I can, offer some type of potential explanation as to what could be going on with these mysteries. There are certainly some very interesting questions within the Hoenn-based games that have yet to be answered, so without any further ado, why don't we go ahead and take a look at them. Alright, so the first unexplained mystery we are going to be looking at here is actually exclusive to the original Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, and that would be the fate of the abandoned ship. The abandoned ship is a location on Route 108 in the Hoenn region that was replaced by C. Mauville in the Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire remakes. However, even though it is a little bit outdated by the standard of the remakes, it actually still offers a very interesting question that still to this day is refusing to be answered. And that question would be, what exactly happened to this ship that caused it to be completely abandoned in the middle of the sea? The abandoned ship obviously didn't sink or anything like that because it is still very clearly on top of the water on the rocky shores of Hoenn's Route 108, which begs the question, if the ship didn't get damaged enough to the point where it sunk to the bottom of the sea, yet was still very clearly completely abandoned, what exactly happened to or on this ship that prompted all of the passengers and crew members to completely abandon it while it was presumably still floating on top of the sea? Well, in the games themselves, there are actually some breadcrumbs that give us a possible clearer picture as to who was involved in the ship's abandonment, and that would be none other than the Elite Four member himself, Drake. Drake is a Dragon-type user for Hoenn's Elite Four, and very clearly based on his attire, he is, or still was, a sailor of some kind, possibly even being the captain of his own ship, given the fact that he is the strongest member of Hoenn's Elite Four, which clearly shows that he commands some respect. You can also tell by looking at his design itself that his clothes seem to be somewhat tattered up, almost as if he's been involved in some kind of skirmish recently that has left his attire somewhat disheveled. So, so far we've got an abandoned, beaten up ship and a sailor looking character who looks like he's seen some trouble recently. But the cherry on top to all of this actually comes from something that was said by Drake himself in Pokemon Emerald. 
Within the match call feature that is available in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, you can hear various characters and trainers say various taglines about themselves. And in Pokemon Emerald, Drake's tagline states that he dedicates his life to the Pokemon that saved him. What does he mean by saved him though? Saved him from what exactly? Well, when you put this statement together with his sailor-like outfit that is somewhat tattered up and the fact that we've got an abandoned ship just sitting out within Hoenn's ocean, it all comes together pretty nicely to paint a picture that Drake was most likely the captain of this ship at the point when it was abandoned. However, the problem here is that we still don't know what caused Drake and the rest of his crew and his passengers to completely abandon the ship. Whatever it was, it must have been something huge if it was too big for Drake himself as an Elite Four member to deal with, but obviously it wasn't something that would have directly sunk the ship since it is still on the shores of the Hoenn region in Route 108. This almost makes it seem like something or someone attacked the abandoned ship and maybe even tried to take it over and abduct the passengers while it was out at sea. So overall, even though we have some kind of idea as to who was involved in the abandoned ship's fate, we really don't know what caused it to have the fate that it does in the game, and the fact that like I said, it is not sunk but is just instead completely abandoned, still floating out there in the middle of the sea, is the eeriest and creepiest part of all of this, and even though we're probably never going to find out what happened, given that the abandoned ship was replaced by C. Mauville in the remakes, it is still a very interesting question to ask, and I would certainly love an answer to it. Next up, we move from the original Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald to something that was mentioned in the remake specifically, and that would be Archie and Maxie's original team. It is stated by Team Magma and Team Aqua Grunts in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire that Archie and Maxi, the leaders of Team Magma and Team Aqua, used to actually be on the same team at one point in time. This is a very, very interesting fact, as it is very clear within the games that Archie and Maxi hate each other, and it's also the only instance within the entirety of the Pokemon series where we have two evil teams within one region that are competing directly against each other as well as with the player. According to this statement though, Archie and Maxi were once on the same team and presumably were also on good terms and possibly even friends with each other at one point. So the question becomes at this point, what was the thing that caused them to become so bitter towards each other and ultimately split up and form their own team? And for that matter, what was the goal of the original team that they were a part of in the first place? These are some really, really fascinating questions that I honestly can't even speculate on that much just because the possibilities are so endless and we really don't have anything to go off of in terms of what could have been the original team for these two characters and what could have been the reason as to why they now hate each other. Based on the fact that Maxi and Archie's teams center around Groudon and Kyogre respectively, it makes me think that whatever this original unified team was about, that it could have had something to do with Rayquaza, as Rayquaza is clearly the third member of that trio, and if there was a third team at some point in the past, it naturally seems like that would be the logical conclusion. Whatever the truth to this situation is, and whether or not it is indeed the case that Archie and Maxie's original team were targeting Rayquaza at one point in time, the question itself of what exactly their original team was is still unbelievably fascinating, and I would absolutely love to know what exactly it was, what exactly happened between Archie and Maxie, and the entire backstory behind the origins of Team Magma and Team Aqua themselves. Moving on though, we've got one that can only be very, very briefly encountered within Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, but still nevertheless brings about a lot of questions that have yet to be answered, and that would be the case of Phoebe and her ghost girls. Back during Generation 6, ghost girls were a thing that were all the rage, and in fact, they still continue within Pokemon games to this day. In the case of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire and the Hoenn region though, they actually took to being with Phoebe when you first encounter her when you're about to battle her in the Elite Four. When Phoebe is giving her introductory speech right before you are about to battle her, there are two very brief instances where you can see in the background two different yet distinct ghost girls. 
Girls. This time around, these two ghost girls actually take the form of little children, as if this wasn't already creepy enough, but once again, much like every single ghost girl that has appeared within Pokemon recently, they are gone just as quickly and just as randomly as they appear, never to be seen or heard from or explained ever again. And this naturally just brings up the question that is a part of the larger question that is, what is up with all of these ghost girls? Are they simply an easter egg that Game Freak has liked to include in more recent Pokemon games just for the fun of it, or do they have some kind of bigger cryptic meaning to them that has not yet been explained to us? And in the case of Phoebe's ghost girls specifically, what exactly is going on with them? They're obviously little girls, as I said previously, which means they died when they were little kids. So what exactly happened to them, and why exactly are they attached to Phoebe specifically? We do know that Phoebe has the ability to communicate with ghosts, which could be the reason why these two are attached to her. Or, it could also be the case that they do have some kind of distinct relationship with her, but if that is indeed the case, that obviously hasn't been mentioned. So unless we get some kind of clarification as to what is going on with Phoebe's Ghost Girls or all of the Ghost Girls in general, I think this one is unfortunately going to stay as an elusive mystery. The next one on our list has to do with one of the biggest conspiracies in all of the Pokemon world, and that would be the overall purpose of New and C Mauville. New Mauville is present in both the original Ruby and Sapphire and their remakes, and from the surface seems to be somewhat of a power plant kind of facility. Sea Mauville, on the other hand, replaced the aforementioned abandoned ship in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and as the name would suggest, is connected to New Mauville in some way. However, the way that it is connected specifically and what is implied to be going on in Sea Mauville in the game is easily one of the darkest things that has ever been within a Pokemon title. Basically, it is heavily implied throughout the games that New Mauville was designed as a post-apocalyptic underground bunker that would act as the New Mauville City, hence the name, in the event that some cataclysmic event actually occurred. Meanwhile, Sea Mauville was designed to provide New Mauville with its power, and the way that it went about generating this power, as is heavily implied throughout the games, is by killing Pokemon and harvesting the infinity energy that lies within them. However, what happened at Sea Mauville isn't the mystery here, rather it is the purpose of Sea Mauville and the purpose of New Mauville as well. As I said, we do know that the facilities were developed in preparation for some kind of cataclysmic event possibly happening. However, what kind of event could have been so scary and terrifying to the people of the Hoenn region that they felt the need to create a massive post-apocalyptic underground bunker with a power plant to boot that harvested the infinity energy of Pokemon by killing them in order to power this post-apocalyptic bunker? We do know that the Hoenn region is susceptible to battles between Groudon and Kyogre, which can obviously cause some damage, and we do also know that they are susceptible to meteor strikes, as we see in the Delta episode of Oraz. However, it seems unlikely that this would be for fear of a meteor striking the region, because we actually see how the people of Hoenn respond to this kind of threat in the Delta episode, where they actually develop the technology to send the meteor to another dimension, something that has nothing to do with what is going on at New and Sea Mauville. And in terms of the Groudon and Kyogre threat, obviously those Pokemon at the beginning of the game are completely sealed away, and there's really nothing that is in danger of them waking up until Team Magma and Aqua actually bump them out of their sleep, so it doesn't seem like this would have been an imminent threat either, to the point where they felt the need to construct this massive facility. As I mentioned earlier, this is easily one of the darkest things that we have ever seen within a single Pokemon game, and it's not like this was the result of the evil team's efforts or the villain of the game either. This project was headed by many protagonists and good people within the Hoenn region, like Watson for instance, the gym leader amongst other people. These people, while obviously not perfect, are good upstanding citizens of the Hoenn region, so to do something this drastic would have required the threat of an absolutely apocalyptic event happening, one the likes of which none of us can possibly hope to imagine. 
And what that event was, or what these people were trying to protect against in developing these facilities, is never mentioned or referred to or hinted at or implied in any way, shape, or form, and obviously, as this development came out of the remakes of the original Ruby and Sapphire, we are most likely never going to find out what is going on here, because we're most likely not going to revisit the Hoenn region and develop its stories anytime soon. But nevertheless, this is absolutely one of the most intriguing mysteries and conspiracies in the entire Pokemon world, and I would absolutely die if we got any more development from it. And the last point on our list would be the Draconids, pretty much as a whole. While we do know some things about them, like they're an ancient tribe of dragon-type wielding people, they worship Rayquaza, and they constructed the Sky Pillar, there are still a lot of things about them that are very mysterious and haven't been explained. For example, there's the fact that by the time Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire roll around, basically the only members of the tribe that are around are Zinnia and her grandmother, and that's about it, so where exactly did the rest of the tribe go? Furthermore, we do know of one other member of the Draconid people, and that would be Aster, who was the Lore Keeper prior to Zinnia, and who also had some kind of close relationship to Zinnia as well, but we don't really know much past that. She isn't around anymore, but we don't really know exactly what happened to her, and we really don't know what kind of close relationship she had with Zinnia as well. There is even the question of whether or not the Draconids even stayed in Hoenn at all or completely left the region altogether, as there is evidence to suggest that they have some kind of relationship with the Dragon Tamer clan in Johto, and the Pokemon Adventures manga even goes so far as to show the Dragon Tamer clan leader with a helmet that has Rayquaza attached to the front. So with this distinct connection to these two very similar Dragon-type tribes, does it mean that they are connected in any way? And if the Dragon Tamer clan are indeed the descendants of the Draconids, then why exactly did the Draconids leave Hoenn in the first place? The Draconids themselves were certainly a very awesome addition to Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire in the remakes of the original Gen 3 games, but obviously, for as much as they brought to the table, they also left as much, if not more, off the table and are leaving us wondering and are leaving us with some unexplained mysteries about their backstory, which we are likely going to continue to wonder about for years to come. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like because it really helps out, and let me know all of your thoughts about these mysteries in the comments below. If you're new to the channel as well, be sure to subscribe for more Pokemon content all the time, and if you'd like to support the channel further, you can do so by listening to my Pokemon remixes on Spotify and giving my Pokemon Cardinal Project a watch if you haven't yet. With all that being said though, I'll be back on Tuesday with another video, so be sure to hit the notification bell as well so you can know as soon as it goes live, and with all of that being said, I love you guys very much, and until the next one, as always, I will smell you guys later.